Sandwell, we visited a school where the children have been difficult to motivate in maths, but seen a near textbook lesson. In this programme, we'll reflect on how a team running an intervention programme has had such an impact on Year 5. At the core has been the programme teacher of the future. The team operate on a 10-week intensive support programme working alongside the teacher, developing their interactive skills, their understanding and knowledge of mathematics, and also targeting individual pupils that are at borderline level four in SATs. The programme targets difficult areas of the curriculum and centrally plans lessons to deliver them. It puts leading teachers into school to mentor class teachers and takes feedback from lessons to improve them even further. Pally had been working with our school for some time and some weeks ago discussed the problem solving lesson with her team. The high quality resources we saw in programme one would take individual teachers too long to produce. But the team can develop them and the teaching strategy around them to have impact and in really, several yeah. schools. For everything that we can, I mean, I think for one activity I'd like to take the kids into the hall and possibly the pupils can be the sheep. Uh, it's risky, but it might make the penny drop for some of them. And that'll help you progress, won't it? The problem in the lesson, herding different numbers of sheep into different pens, might be a difficult concept for many urban children. So the discussion's largely been about how to make this more accessible. Pal is now able to take the expert's lesson and resources and pass them on to Year 5 teacher Becky Miller at her planning session back in school. Sorry. With encouragement from the central team, Pal is going to push Becky into taking a few risks that she believes will help. Them understanding, we want them to have some practical hands-on as well. Yeah. So at this point we could take them into the hall, there's 24 pupils taking them into the hall, having three mats of different sizes. Yeah. And then two pupils go into the smallest mat. Okay, how many are left? So it's exactly the same problem, and before they attempt to solve it, we can do it as a whole group. So they're actually seeing where each other could move to and how many are in each pen? Yeah, because here we're talking about sheep, but it's exactly the same problem. But just with themselves? Just, just with instead themselves. Instead of the sheep, that's And if they're physically moving. I think the success of the lesson comes down to actually having that vital planning time at the beginning to sit down with Becky and actually go through uh, what she feels about problem solving, what she's done with her class, and focusing on exactly what we need to do and what we want to get out of it at the end, and how we can engage the children, how we can motivate them within the lesson. So I think that, that was crucial uh, to the success yeah. of the lesson today. I mean, I think one of the other things has been the amount of resources and having those available, because, mm. I mean, they obviously took quite a lot of time to prepare, and it's not something you could do every day, but it's a way, brilliant way of introducing it to them as well. Mm. How many sheep might the dog try to get into each pen? Find as many different ways as we can. Right, whose mind's going, oh, too much information. Hands down. That's what I thought when I first read it. But you remember, today, we're actually working systematically. I noticed, Becky, in the lesson, you're, you're very explicit with your learning objective and you have it written on the board and you also you say, what benefit does that have on, on pupils' learning? It's something that we've been working on as a school, is having an objective in the success criteria. And when Teacher of the Future came in, they also incorporated that. So it added to what the children were already used to, and it built on that and how to use it, which really helped me with how to build it into the lesson a bit better. In terms of problem solving, how, what are the barriers to problem solving that somebody like Becky could encounter? A lot of teachers that we work with have, have taught problem solving and sometimes it, it's actually quite difficult to teach and what we find is that what we want to do is actually involve the pupils in the lesson so they're yeah. part of the lesson, they're involved, they're focused and it also gives them a sense of achievement to answer the problem by the end of it. So the largest pen must have the most amount of sheep and the smallest pen has got to have the least amount of sheep. Let's read the question. How many sheep might the dog try to get into each pen? Find as many different ways as you can. Right, whose mind's going, oh, too much information? <sighs> Hands down. That's what I thought when I first read it. But do you remember when the, the slide came up with the problem on? We didn't actually show them the whole text together. 
because it would have, I mean, it threw me the first time I read yeah. it. So we split that up and made sure they, they took each part and they understood each part. So the first one was about a farm renting a sheepdog trial. Well, what's a sheepdog trial? You know, what is it? And so it's a competition. So they understood that. Then the second part, the what's a pen? So, you know, is it, is it the pen that you work with? How can we get 24 sheep into the pens? And actually showing them the visual image and then showing them that it's three, actually, and it's three of different sizes. And then after that, when they go away, when they went away to their tables, they're highlighting then the important information that they need. So we've gone from, you know, what's the sheet, what's the trial, then to the mathematical concept. OK, do you think that the sheep is important? Do you think it would matter if it was elephants or dogs or cats? So do you think you need that bit highlighted? No. Do you think the number's important? Yeah. yeah. OK, tell you what, get a pencil, just cross out the sheet bit because you don't need that bit. OK, what else do you think's important? Why was it so important then that we took the children then into the hall and started to sort of work around an active part of the lesson? I think one of the things with the children in our school is they, quite a lot of them are kinesthetic learners. They like to move, they like to get involved with it. And having an activity like that really helped them with their thinking and their understanding. And them actually being the sheep. And they'd become part of the problem yeah. then. So they were the problem, they were the sheep. They had to be arranged. How were they going to do? And actually physically moving, going onto the small mat, they can see now the pens in front of them. So it's not on the interactive whiteboard. We're actually in the problem now, so yeah. how are we going yeah. to solve it? So I've got two, four. Can you six over here come and squeeze onto the mat? And four of you. So that's six and four, so that's 10. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I think then the idea is that we could come back and they could transfer their movement actually onto paper mm -hmm. then. And so it's gradually, there's been a system in our teaching as well as in their learning. We've looked at it, then we've done it, then we're going to move things, then we're going to write them down in actual numbers. So it's gradually progressing, isn't it? Yeah. So we've gone from reading the problem, understanding the problem, going into the hall and you actually being the problem, you're the sheep, we need to arrange yeah. us, how are we going to do it? And now going back into the classroom and we'll actually be arranging the sheeps are finding more than two ways which we have done in the hall. In the envelopes, you've got three pieces of card. What do you think these represent, Akeeb? Pens. The pens, just like the mats in the hall. I want you to find as many answers as you can with only two sheep in the smallest pen. How many are we going to put in the first pen, in the smallest pen? Okay. Have you got your pens ready? Have you got your balls out? Formative assessment plays a large part in this lesson, from highlighting the learning objective and the success criteria to peer assessing solutions using digital photos. And one of my roles within their group activity was going around and taking the digital photographs of their arrangements of sheep, so then we can upload those images onto the interactive whiteboard and dis discuss those at the end of it. It's not something that's possible in every lesson. When there's only one of you, obviously, you can't go around taking those images. But it was a really useful resource for me to have. Yeah. And um, they were excited by that. Shaki, looking at this first picture, and I think this was taken from that orange table, we've got two, two and twenty. Is that a possibility? Uh, no. Why not? Because you know, the smallest and the middle is uh, just the number the same. Their numbers are the same. What have they got to be? Uh, 2, 4 and 18. They've got to be 2, 4 and 18. Can you see that one anywhere? Having encouraged the pupils to peer assess using the digital photographs, Pally and Becky had to have a plan for how to move those children on who have demonstrated that they have a grasp of the concept. This is done by changing some of the rules. What I'll do then, as a homework I'm challenge, to... I'm going to give you 51 sheep. Mm. Odd numbers only. Our numbers are and the same for these two rules, okay? So it's 51. Shaggy. I'm on 30. Number two. I'm on 30. You can't do that. Let me go for this. 51 Miss sheep. Billy. This is making it harder for us. Our numbers and those two rules apply. 13, 15, 15. You have the opportunity as well to do some I mean, I had the work. opportunity with one of the groups to actually stretch them further than the original problem. Um, we were able to extend 
two of the criteria and they really, really got involved in it. All the groups have now found all possibilities using the concrete apparatus. But can this be transferred to purely numerical solutions? Oh, I wonder who's got a wrong answer for us. They might tell us which ones are right. Connor. Four add twelve add eight is wrong because the design... Because in the middle one, it's bigger than the... Big... It's than the large one. pen. Yeah. yeah? Was that one of our rules? <coughs> yeah, I mean, that was something that really helped with the systematic approach. They moved from one step onto the other and they actually didn't realise the process that they were moving. Mm. They just, some of them just began to automatically draw out the numbers and use the numbers from using the sheep, which worked really well. Why use the, the, the lesson based around sheep and sheep pens when the, the children live in a, in, a, in a community that's very urban and, and something that perhaps they can't relate to, weren't you making your lesson more difficult? Could you not have picked a situation that was more real to them and their lives? We could have picked something, um, I agree with your point. The lesson's actually taken from the Primary National Strategies Finding All Possibilities lesson, and within the lesson it does refer to sheep and sheep, sheep dogs. What we wanted to get out of them was actually the maths, and the maths within that problem, the sheep doesn't matter. It's also important when they're doing their tests, a lot of the time they'll get things that's not at all in a context that they're used to. Um, it may be sheep, it may be lorry drivers, they need to be able to pull out that information and that's one of the other reasons we thought it was really important mm -hmm. to use something that maybe they're not that used to but where they still have to draw out the numerical vocabulary. But for Pally and the team that's not the end of the process. They use the evidence from Becky's classroom to refine the lesson, so it will be even better next time it's delivered in a different school. So it's worked really, really well. I think they actually bounced off each other quite well. Yeah. And then you could see that on the tables then, when the pupils were, were working in their pairs, they were working very well as well, almost. You know, we were modelling and they yeah. were taking yeah. it on on their tables. You no, know, it, was, it was a good double act. I mean, when Pally actually leaves the classroom, what are you going to be left with and how has that improved your problem-solving delivery in future lessons? I've learnt quite a few interactive whiteboard skills and ways to incorporate the children and make it suitable for different abilities as well, which was something that was really useful to stay and showed up in their learning yeah. as well. And, and do you think that the children benefited in terms of their problem-solving understanding with having two teachers who were so dynamic in front of the interactive whiteboard? I think because we were involved with each other and involved with them, and there was, there was a lot of interactiv and interactivity going on, um, that kept them motivated, didn't it? So giving Becky the opportunity to deliver a lesson with expert Pally and good interactive whiteboard resources has had a significant impact on Year 5 taking them from challenging to motivated and encouraging her to be more innovative with all her maths teaching. The long-term success is that one, we will have experienced, effective, highly skilled teachers using new technologies and secondly, that our standards in mathematics in Sandwell will not be at the bottom of the league table but will have risen to the top.